quick revision video for the inorganic qualitative analysis topic for AS chemistry. So in the video I'm going to look at the test for one cation, that's the ammonium ion, and the anions carbonate, sulfate, and the halide ions chloride, bromide, and iodide. So all I'm going to do is run through the test, the expected observation, and the ionic equation. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to look at the correct order that the tests should be carried out in. So starting with the ammonium ion, you had a small amount of dilute sodium hydroxide and you warm gently. You test any gas produced with damp red litmus paper and the litmus paper should go blue due to the production of ammonia gas. So there's the ion equation and obviously it's this ammonia gas that causes the litmus to go blue. Carbonate ion now, so you had a small amount of dilute acid. I normally use nitric acid. The reaction should produce effervescence or bubbling due to the production of carbon dioxide gas, which you can bubble through lime water, um, which should go cloudy if you want to. And there's the ionic equation for that one. The sulfate ion so you'd add a small amount of aqueous barium 2 plus ions. So I will use barium nitrate solution. You can use barium chloride solution. As long as there's barium ions present, it's going to work. But I would use that one because it's not going to contaminate the sample with chloride ions. The reaction should produce a white precipitate due to the production of barium sulfate. And there's the ionic equation for that. So moving on to the halide ions now, we'll start with the chloride ion. You add a small amount of dilute nitric acid first, and that's to remove any carbonate ions. We'll look at that in more detail when we look at the correct order of the tests. You then add a small amount of aqueous silver nitrate solution. And just to explain, if there were any carbonate ions present, so you don't remove them with the nitric acid first, you would get a precipitate of silver carbonate. And obviously that's going to give you a false positive. So let's imagine there were chloride ions in there, no carbonate ions, and you should get a white precipitate due to the production of silver chloride. So the ion equation for that precipitation reaction looks like that. And then there's a backup test you can do. The precipitate, the silver chloride precipitate, will fully dissolve on addition of a small amount of dilute aqueous ammonia. So moving on to the bromide ion now, very very similar test, just slightly different um, colour of the precipitate and there's a slight difference in the uh, aqueous ammonia aspect at the end. So same again, small amount of dilute nitric acid to remove any carbonate ions, add a small amount of silver nitrate solution and there's a reminder that the carbonate ions would give that um, false positive silver carbonate precipitate. So the bromide ions should produce a cream precipitate, not white, but cream precipitate due to the production of silver bromide. And there's the ionic equation for that. So the aqueous ammonia test, the precipitate will partially dissolve if you use dilute aqueous ammonia, but it will fully dissolve if you add concentrated aqueous ammonia. And the last ion is the iodide ion, so very similar again. So we've got the nitric acid at the start to get rid of the carbonate ions. You add a small amount of silver nitrate solution. Reminder of the false positive. If there were iodide ions present, you get a yellow precipitate now due to the production of silver iodide. There's the ionic equation. And this time with the aqueous ammonia, the precipitate is insoluble if you add dilute or concentrated aqueous ammonia. Okay, so moving on to the correct order for the anion tests now. So that's the negatively charged ions. The ammonium ion test can be done at any point. I would normally do that first, to be honest. Um, so let's imagine you've got a mystery substance. We need to carry out the tests in the correct order, which is carbonate, then sulfate, then halide. And luckily it spells out a familiar word, cash. There's no official cash order. I just came up with that acronym too remember the order for the tests. Now in the previous um, slides when I was talking through the test the assumption was we know which ion is in the test tube we're just confirming its presence there. 
So what we're doing here is we're thinking about if you do a test on a mystery substance. So we do them in this particular order. And that's because we've kind of already mentioned you get a false positive result. So when you added those silver ions to carbonate ions, you would get a false positive. So I'll go through all the false positives now, and then we'll finish with a couple of examples if you do it in the wrong order. Okay, so if you add barium ions to carbonate ions, so if you carried out um, a sulfate test, but you've got a carbonate ion present, you'd get a white precipitate of barium carbonate, but obviously you would think that that was um, barium sulfate and think you had sulfate ions present. So it's a false positive. And there's the ionic equation for that. If you added silver ions to carbonate ions, I've already mentioned this one, you get a yellow gray precipitate of silver carbonate. There's the ionic equation for that one. And if you added silver ions to sulfate ions, you would get white precipitate of silver sulfate. And there's the ionic equation for that. So we'll look at a couple of examples now. So let's suppose we've got a test tube and there's carbonate ions in there, but we don't know that they're carbonate ions. We've just got this mystery substance. And let's suppose the sulfate ion test was carried out first. So barium ions would have been added and they'd have reacted with the carbonate ions and you would have got barium carbonate solid, you would have white precipitate and you would have thought that that meant that there were sulfate ions present. Whereas in fact, it's the carbonate ions that have caused the precipitate. Now let's suppose the halide ion test was carried out first. So you add silver ions, and they're going to react with the carbonate ions, and you get that yellow gray precipitate of silver carbonate. And that would make you think that you've got bromide or iodide ions in there due to the color. So hopefully you can see from those two examples that it's really important to carry out the tests for the anions in the correct order. So carbonate, so you'd add your um, dilute acid. Um, if you don't get any bubbling, you then move on to the sulfate ion test. So you'd add barium two plus ions. And then if you don't get a white precipitate, you can move on to the halide ion test.